Demand for postgraduate education far outstrips supply as funding for study at this level is extremely limited and supervision capacity is low because of the low number of academics with the necessary qualifications and experience. Only 39% of South African academics had doctorates in 2014. In relation to its social and economic needs, South Africa produces far too low a number of postgraduates. This is not to say that we haven't had successes in this regard. As this graph illustrates, the number of doctorates graduating each year has increased significantly. However, if we are to come anywhere close to achieving the National Development Plan's goal of 5,000 doctoral graduates per year by the year 2030, systemic level change will be needed. We will not only have to attend to the problem of low participation, but we will also have to address our completion rates, whereby only 46% of doctoral candidates graduate within seven years. A great deal of excellent research has been undertaken in the last few years to investigate the state of postgraduate education in South Africa. This research provides us with a wealth of explanations and points to a number of areas requiring attention, with frequent reference to issues such as funding, inexperienced or poor supervision, etc. But amongst such explanations is the reliance on the traditional apprenticeship models of supervision, especially in the humanities and social sciences, where it remains the dominant approach to postgraduate pedagogy. The research suggests that this idea of postgraduate study as the individual journey often gives rise to a sense of loneliness and isolation. We are the Institutional Differentiation Group and we have been working as a team. In contrast to the one-on-one -on -one apprenticeship model of postgraduate education, project teams bring together a number of scholars to tackle a shared problem area, typically with a shared theoretical approach or methodology. Such teams often enjoy project funding and cohere around a team of supervisors who share a research interest. We are a team of seven members. We each come from uh, different provinces or different parts of the country. And so we have, um, we meet regularly, almost at least once per month, on online seminars where we got um, an opportunity to share our concerns, our challenges, share our progress, and this has been very helpful in terms of our project. And also just to add there, um, uh, normally when we come in for doc weeks, we put up in one space or one living space and uh, we also have interactions. For example, when we're doing our proposal uh, presentations, we do mock runs. Uh, before the day. We we'll do that at the dinner table, at the breakfast table. Oh, know? yes. Yeah. yes. Mm -hmm. So it, uh, it's been more like a casual way of, of learning, but I think... Quite intense. As yes, well. intense mm -hmm. as well. Mm -hmm. So it's been very helpful. In particular, for the doctoral weeks, where we came here for a week and uh, we um, we shared our experiences, we engaged with uh, high-level presentations and the doc weeks themselves were actually themed, some of them were looking at uh, um, higher education as a public good. Mm -hmm. And, uh, and then we, we also had uh, experts who were like presenters would come and present on what they've written. We actually shared information through various social media platforms like WhatsApp, uh, Facebook, and uh, we also shared some common readings and files in applications like Dropbox and Google Drive. So it has been a, a very a good experience being in this group. What was very interesting was the fact that we had coursework assignments in our first year together. And what stood out was we peer review our colleagues work and that was very interesting because you really then got a bit of insight as to where you are lacking as well as where your colleague needs a bit of support etc 
So that, that I found very, very helpful. And I think because it was at the beginning of the whole journey, it gave you just a bit of confidence to know that indeed, you know, we are not alone, we're journeying together. And just to add also, one of the highlights for me, I think one of the programs which was very helpful was the structured writing retreats. Like now we're actually at a, at a week long writing retreat, whereby we have a structured, uh, um, allocated time to focus on your writing. To Pomodoros. Yes, to techniques like Pomodoros, Shut Up and Write where you block all negative um, disturbances and focus on writing. When we are down, we get support from the colleagues. I call my aunt and cry a lot. Yeah. And she gives me some <laughs> consolation over the phone. Yeah. And she says, you can do it. And afterwards, I can go and read. Yeah. Yeah, this is a safe space where we share ideas, we support each other. Even back at, when one is back at home, you know that you are not the only one. You have a team and other people that you meet through the dog weeks outside this team. And we keep watch on each other's publications and one of us publishes, we all bask in the success of a member of the group. On the other hand, due to the diverse nature of the group, coming from different backgrounds. We do have some conflicts at some point. But this is, we have challenged into a collaborative conflict whereby we, we attack our problems together, we, we attack the challenges together instead of attacking each other. While researching collaboratively is very much the norm in the natural sciences, in the humanities and social sciences it can be frowned upon and the Oxbridge tutorial method with its apprentice approach to supervision is valued. There is sometimes a concern expressed that having students researching together in a collaborative and structured way at postgraduate level is problematic because students need to be working independently. But research suggests that working in project teams actually enhances the likelihood of postgraduate scholars crossing conceptual thresholds to produce knowledge at the required levels. There was a community base of people who were at all different levels of a PhD. So there was an, a wonderful support group that I found. They were able to give me advice on the process as well as um, different readings that I might need or might help in my particular area as well. Being a part of a community really assists you in being around fellow uh, colleagues and scholars doing the same thing, so being a part of the PhD itself. It's not only for the actual process of the PhD, so not only for the, the practicality and the theory, but it's also for just being around people going through the same frustrations that you are. So in terms of feeling down or feeling unmotivated, just speaking to this type of people, it, it, it just gets you back onto where you were at the beginning, I guess. So I guess my, my one recommendation would be to either find a community of practice, so a, a supportive community, a network, either with fellow PhD scholars or scholars in the same area as yourself, or start your own community, create a, a group, get PhDs together either within your organization or within your institution, just so that you actually create the support that might be needed for this journey. This video is licensed under Creative Commons and you are welcome to use or adapt it.